Dave back here. During the break over the Christmas season, N.W. Piper left a comment uh, under one of my videos and he asked a question. The question was, with a limited budget of only $250, what equipment should you buy if you want to make a start at pipe maintenance and restoration work? You want to get a foothold in the hobby, in other words. Initially, I was just going to leave a comment, but then I gave it some more thought and I realized that maybe this is a question that more people would want to know the answer to. And besides, it's probably easier to answer this in a video than it is to try and write it all down. So without further ado, let me walk you through this. Let me show you what I think you should get if you want to have a basic set of tools to make a start in this without spending a ton of money. N.W. Piper's budget that he mentioned in his question was $250. And that's a very small budget. So with that, you're going to keep it really basic. But it's perfectly possible and it's totally doable to get into some basic pipe maintenance and even into some minor repairs with that budget. So here's what I would do. And I'm going to split it out into three categories. You have some manual tools. You also have some consumables and you have some power tools that you need to buy. Now, uh, how do you split the cost up? I would spend very little on power tools because they're expensive and they run your budget down very quickly. And honestly, you don't need much. I would spend probably half the money on manual tools and the rest on consumables. So here's where I would spend my money in terms of manual tools. This is the whole, whole setup that you need to do basic pipe maintenance and simple restorations. You need reaming tools. You need some cleaning tools for the bowl. Then you need some cleaning and repair tools for the, um, for the stem and for the shank. And then you need some polishing tools. You also need some measuring tools in order to make sure that you keep your dimensions correctly and you need some safety gear. So let's walk through it. Starting with the safety gear. Go and spend $5 on a set of safety glasses. It's worth your while. So enough said about that. For reaming tools, this is where you're going to spend the bulk of your money. Uh, if you want to buy a good quality reamer, that could take you back easily $80. So if you don't have a lot of money and you want to do it on a budget, here's what I'm going to recommend you do. Go and buy yourself a cheap pocket knife. It doesn't have to be an expensive one. It doesn't have to have a very high quality blade even. Round off the tip of that blade so that it doesn't have a sharp end. And you can use that to do the rough reaming inside the bowl without gouging it. And then for the fine reaming, get a British Butner tool. These little tools are great. They're not expensive. You can buy them at any tobacconist. And um, they're a couple of dollars. And they work like a charm. They're fantastic. So that takes care of your reaming. For exterior cleaning of the bowl, a toothbrush and a brass brush. These brass brushes, you can pick them up at the hardware store. They are next to nothing. They are really something that uh, is almost a consumable. Okay, then when we get to the stem, for stem cleaning, um, the only tools that I really use is uh, bead reamers, which you can pick up at hobby stores like Michael's in North America for a few dollars. But most importantly, is a needle file set. That's going to run you maybe 10 to $15. And this is where you're going to spend a bit more money as well. But they're very handy in terms of dealing with filing away marks and nicks and dents in stems. I'm going to recommend you buy three drill bits, which you're going to use to clean uh, the inside of the stem. And you're also going to use it to clean the inside of the shaft. Uh, you're going to buy an eighth of an inch. You're going to buy nine sixty fourths and a five thirty second drill bit. In metric, that's 3.1, 3.5 and 3.9 millimeters. A lot of pipes are drilled to a four millimeter diameter or around a 3.5 millimeter. And all of these will work. 
if a pipe is really clogged up, you're going to start with a little one. You're going to work your way up to a bigger one until you get to the right dimension. I also use these little uh, bottleneck brushes, uh, very small ones like this, um, which you can buy on eBay for maybe a dollar. Uh, soak them in alcohol and I run them back and forth inside the shank in order to draw out and clean out some of the gunk that's in there. Invest in an X-Acto knife, a couple of dollars again, very handy general tool uh, that you just want to have by your side. Now, the one thing that I did not spend money on because I made it myself and which I'm not including in this calculation is tenon expansion tools. Uh, if you have to go and buy tenon expansion tools, they can be somewhat pricey, uh, maybe anything from $30 to $50. I made mine out of nails and they cost me the price of two nails. And I've said about that. There's an episode of that, of that uh, in a previous episode that I've done. Go and buy yourself a couple of washcloths and a couple of microfiber cloths for cleaning and for to assist when you do your polishing. And then go and buy three of these. One for, uh, actually two. You can get away with two. Uh, one for White Diamond and one for Canuba. These are polishing discs that's made out of cotton. It's basically a series of cotton sheets that screw together. They come stitched uh, and I just took out the stitching because you don't need it. And actually it's a bit too hard when they stitched. And you stick them in the front of your drill. And that is good enough for polishing a pipe. And uh, later on, if you want to upgrade, then you can upgrade to uh, a more expensive polishing system. There's an episode about that on my channel as well. For measuring, uh, I use an electronic uh, caliper with a digital display. It was $15 at Canadian Tire up here in Canada. Uh, they're not expensive anymore. And you can see this is the Mastercraft one. It's not an expensive model. And um, it's quite handy uh, in terms of figuring out whether your dimensions are accurate. So I'd recommend that you go and invest in one of those. At the very least, if you don't want to invest in that, just invest in a steel ruler because it's quite handy and useful to use for cutting things. So those are your manual tools. And if you put all of this together, and let's say you put an expensive reamer in there too. You'd probably look at around $150 for all of this. So that's maybe a little more than half of your budget that's gone. If you take the expensive reamer out, all of this can be less than $100, uh, maybe $60 to $80. Now, for power tools, if you're on a tight budget, I would not recommend that you invest in power tools because they are expensive. And the only power tool that I would recommend that you have, if you don't have one already, is a variable speed hand drill. It doesn't have to have a hammer drill function. It doesn't have to have a reverse function in it. It just needs to have a variable speed. This is a more expensive uh, drill. You don't have to go as expensive as this. You can buy a basic variable speed drill for under $50 you know, maybe $30 even. And the reason you need one is to be able to do polishing of your pipe with these little discs. That's the only reason you need it. And while you're at it, pick up a couple of these clamps so you can clamp it down on a table because that is also a useful thing to be able to do. Now, I want to switch over and I'm going to lay out for you what all the consumables are that you're going to buy. <clears throat> okay, now for consumables, starting with sanding the exterior of the bowl. You need a variety of grids. I start with a 300 grit uh, foam back pad uh, for the rough sanding. And I buy this in the hardware store in the paint section where you have drywall sanding equipment. So not a lot of money there, but this is just the beginning. After that, I go to these waterproof auto papers that you buy in the automotive uh, repair section uh, of something like KMS Tools or an equivalent um, tool supplier. 
These are waterproof uh, sandpapers, and I buy a 320, a 600, and a 1,000 grid of those. In addition to that, I buy micro-mesh pads, which runs from 1,500 to 12,000 grid. All of these you're going to be replacing all the time because you keep wearing them out. So that's your sanding tools. Uh, in terms of interior cleaning, you're going to need uh, bristled, tapered pipe cleaners, and you're also going to need regular pipe cleaners. That goes without saying. And by the way, go and invest in a box of vinyl gloves because your hands will thank you later. Uh, in terms of exterior cleaning as well, you're going to need a lot of isopropyl alcohol. Uh, I buy at least a 90%. You get 90 or 99%. Either one of those will work. And um, you can buy that in the drugstore. You also need to buy some vegetable oil soap. Here in North America, it's made by a company called Murphy, which is great for cleaning the exterior of the bowl. For stem cleaning, I have some OxyClean and some Mr. Clean uh, Magic Eraser foam pads, which looks like that. And uh, then with the polishing side of things, uh, you need two types, at least. You need the white diamond compound and you need the Canuba. There's also a red Tripoli compound, but with my sanding uh, setup, with my um, sandpapers, I almost never use the red Tripoli because the red Tripoli takes it back down to around the 600 grid. So uh, I feel like I go backwards when I put the red Tripoli on it. So I've settled on these two as the uh, two alternatives that I use. For repairs on stems and other repairs, we have to build up areas in the bowl. Uh, you need some super glue. I use 10 minute and 20 minute super glues. I actually have a 10 and a 20 clear and a 10 and a 20 black. I buy these from Stumac. This is quite expensive. Uh, and look out for some sales because they sometimes have a two for one deal. And then you can pick up some extra, which is very handy. So keep an eye out for that. You're also going to need some activated charcoal, which you can buy in a health food store, and they come in little capsules. This is a little expensive. This may be $20 for those, but they last forever. So in terms of these consumables, the things that last forever, the Murphy so soap, you'll buy it once. That, you'll buy it once. Uh, and then the other thing that you're going to buy once, and it's going to last a long time, but it is expensive, is the leather dies. Uh, Thebings make them. You can buy them in a leather store if you have a local one, or you can buy uh, them online. But they run anything from eight to fifteen dollars a bottle, depending on where you buy them. And you need some colors. So uh, I buy these uh, whenever I do another pipe. I tend to buy one more color. I think I now have probably around ten colors sitting there. And um, once you have it, of course, it lasts for a long time, but uh, to buy them all initially would be quite a lot. And then lastly, a roll of paper towels, uh, which of course doesn't cost you much. So all of these things to buy all of this the first time around is maybe going to cost you 60 to $80, but most of it lasts quite a long time and you need to spend very little money after that to replace it. Um, maybe depending on how many pipes you do, uh, you're talking about maybe uh, $15 to $20 a month at the most if you do quite a few pipes. So those are the consumable side uh, of this. And uh, I hope that helps to answer the question about what you need to get started in this. Um, it's not an expensive hobby and it's not difficult to do. It doesn't have to cost you a lot of money to do this unless you get into really complicated repairs. Uh, if you have to rebuild stems or if you have to do uh, complicated repair work, then you start to need complicated tools 
um, as long as you can stay away from having to have a lathe or um, expensive sanding gear or um, drill presses and those kind of things, you can do it fairly cheaply. Uh, so as long as you keep it basic, it could be fun. You don't need a lot of space. I do all my repair work in a space that is two feet by three feet. And uh, so you don't need a huge room to do this either. So thanks for watching. And uh, I'm happy to be back and hoping to do a lot more videos this year. So keep watching and thanks for all the comments I received uh, while I was away. Until next time.